The question is, what does that mean? I don't know how to judge that and rank that and understand that. And so there's a little bit of fear there when it comes to those international degrees. The Old Premeds Podcast, session number 258. Welcome to the Old Premeds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week, where I take questions directly from the non traditional pre med discussion over at premedforms.com. That non traditional pre med discussion is your place to go ask questions that could eventually end up here on the podcast. So if you have a question, go over there right now. And if you haven't checked out mapped.com yet, I highly recommend you do. As I'm recording this, we had just released a feature for feedback, which is really the core of what I've wanted mapped to do from the beginning, which is take the information that you are giving mapped, that you are entering into mapped, all of your courses, your activities, your MCAT scores, and mapped can then take that information and give you personalized recommendations on your journey to medical school. MAPT is so much more than an application tool. A lot of people think that they should wait to sign up for MAPT until they're ready to apply. But MAPT is really there for you. As soon as you know you are a pre-med student, as soon as you know you want to go to medical school, you should sign up for MAPT. You can get a free two-week trial at MAPT.com today. And and just a, a word of, not a word of warning, but a, a, an update as well. In the future, we're getting ready to push out uh, an update where you can have your advisors be on your account, not be on your account, but be able to access your account so that when you schedule an appointment with your own advisor, they can log into their own account, an advisor level account, and see your information. So you're not wasting time going over everything that you've already been doing. It's already right there in Mapped for them. So go again, sign up for a free two week trial at mapped.com today. That's M A P P D dot com. All right. So our question today is all about being an international student but not an international student, having an international degree. And this comes up a lot. And I always scratch my head at this one. Uh, I understand people traveling and and wanting to do things and being a U.S. citizen, living abroad, and and having maybe one parent who's a U.S. citizen and one uh, who is a citizen of another country and being born in another country but still having U.S. citizenship. But it complicates so many things when it comes to wanting to go to medical school. In the kind of general sense, U.S. medical schools want you to have typically, the the number that's thrown out there is 90 hours of U.S. credits, 90 hours of U.S. US credits. And so you'll see in the question today where I go with my answer based on that number. Our student today is asking, I'm so glad to be here and thank you, Dr. Gray, for this opportunity. My name is Ima. I am a U.S. citizen. I have a degree in microbiology with about a 3.3 from my Nigerian university and so far have taken about 66 credits of college work with a 4.0 GPA in the U.S. Courses that I have taken are as follows, Gen Chem 1 and 2, Biology 1 and 2, Organic Chem 1 and 2, Physics 1 and 2, Psychology, Sociology, Biochemistry, Cell Biology, English 1 and 2, Algebra, Pre-Calc, and Calc. Would you suggest I take the MCAT and apply to medical schools or get another degree? All right, so with the preface that I started with, that the majority of schools out there are going to want to have this 90-hour rule of U.S. credits, and I don't know where that comes from. I haven't done any research on why they have this rule out there, but with that general rule of thumb, you should most likely, with 66 credit hours of work already and 90 hours typically needed, usually you're just a few hours away from getting another degree, if not already on track. So while typically you don't say that a degree is required, a U.S. degree is required to get into a U.S. medical school, you can see that the 90 credit hours basically says get a degree in the U.S. And I don't know, I've never really sat down to think about, is it fair, is it not fair? Why do we do that? Are we we judging other countries' educational level? Uh, But I think really what it is, at, at the core, is 
U.S. medical schools are comfortable with the U.S. educational system, where students are in the process going from the the kind of middle school, high school, uh, middle school, high school, college, and then to medical school, wherever that process is here in the U.S., Medical schools are comfortable with that. It's it's understandable. It's recognizable. That is where our comfort level is. And when a student comes from a Nigerian university with a, a GPA of 3.3 in microbiology, the question is, what does that mean? I don't know how to judge that and rank that and understand that. And so there's a little bit of fear there when it comes to those international degrees. And so to put everybody on a level playing field in terms of really understanding who these people are and and where their academic success lies, they say, go get a lot of classes at a a U.S. institution so that we can get a better understanding and better way to rank you and judge you in in this whole process. Now, is that fair? Is Is it not fair? I'm not the one to judge that, at least not right now. But that is the general answer is 90 hours from a U.S. institution, even if you already have a degree from an international school, even if you're a U.S. citizen. So with that said, again, typically with 66 credit hours, needing 90 for a lot of schools, you're you're probably better off just going ahead and getting that second degree with the caveat that the the second degree actually doesn't mean anything. It's just the total credit hours in the grand scheme of things. Obviously, you're crushing it to get a 4.0 here in the U.S. with 66 credits. That has clicked for you, so congratulations on that. Keep up that success and continue on your journey. And so if you are someone potentially listening to this and you're early on in the process, maybe you're not a non-traditional student, but you're watching this anyway or listening to this anyway, if you think that you want to go on an adventure, uh, even if you're a U.S. citizen, you lived in the U.S. your whole life, and you want to go on an adventure and go get a degree at a foreign institution, go ahead, but understand that if your goal is to go to medical school here in the U.S., you likely will have to repeat basically everything all over again. Now, I always like to caveat everything I say with, you may find some exceptions out there. You may reach out to some schools that you're interested in and say, here's who I am. This is what I've done so far. Can I apply to your school? Or do you have this 90-hour requirement? So do a little bit of legwork, reach out to some schools, give them a little bit of a backstory of who you are, where you're at, and see what they say. I love getting answers directly from the horse's mouth. That's why I do a lot of the podcasts that I do so I can speak directly to admissions committee members and deans and directors of medical schools. That's why I love doing my Ask the Dean series with MAPT at at mapt.tv with Dr. Scott Wright, who's the former director of admissions at UT Southwestern Medical School and the former executive director at TMDSAS, where he interfaced with all of the public medical schools in Texas that all utilize TMDSAS. So uh, go straight to the horse's mouth and see if maybe there's a shortcut for you on your specific journey. I hope that was helpful. Again, go check out MAPT at MAPT.com, M-A-P-P-D.com. Sign up for a free two-week trial. Check out all of the great feedback that we are starting to build inside of MAPT now that that feature is available. And pretty soon, if not as soon as you're signing up for it, you can now invite your advisor to access your mapped account and see everything that you're doing. It is read-only access. They can't change anything in your account, but they can see everything that you are doing. Again, mapped.com, M-A-P-P-D.com. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.